Hey! What's going on, everybody? Let me turn this thing down. There we go. Hopefully that's a little better. I'm not trying to blow your ears out or anything. Hot down! Oh, wait, let me just turn up this a little bit. Oh, yeah! Yeah, that's what we're talking about right now! Woo! Or something like that. Man, what's going on, everybody? that like way down <laughs> I'm just checking all my audio levels here man so I got this new super crappy headset I'm hoping it's gonna work oh yeah oh yeah oh it's so good guys it's so good all right here we go here we go don't judge me now don't judge me now so this is what's going on forgive strobe cam I am filming on like the most ancient surface don't worry about it laptop is all jacked up so we got this thing so I'm a little bit stroby tonight and I know this and I'm sorry and you can't do like a photography thing and have like a crappy webcam but this is just how it's gonna work for now okay so here's my plan was I was going to do a video about like TTL versus manual flash and like what was better. And um, then I thought, well, that's stupid. I mean, like we'll, we can we can do something cool, cooler than that. That's boring stuff. So instead, what I want to do is like pet photography. And we can do pet photography, both TTL and manual. And the cool thing is, is like a lot of us have pets and we can explore, like pets are really, really good. Um, they're really good subjects. They get a lot of likes on social media. So many people have pets. So if you want to like, you know, take a picture of somebody's pets, you can make money that way. But we're going to talk about uh, lighting. And what kind of lighting we can use for this. And we're going to do both. We're going to do uh, TTL. We're going to do manual. Discuss which one I use more. But uh, let's just really quickly just sort of introduce the space. So hold on a second here. Stand by. Actually, let's do this. There we go. This is our space. This is where we're working tonight. Let's get this framed up. So you don't need to have a massive studio, okay? We have a fairly... Let me put myself in the middle of this for context. Right? So it's actually bigger than it looks through the camera. Because we're going kind of ultra wide. But um, I didn't know how I wanted to do this tonight or what kind of tools I just kind of thought about what might be kind of neat most of the action is going to happen like right about there so we'll just kind of focus in on that stuff I want to make sure you guys are able to see all the things that we're going to do tonight so let's talk about what I got here I went to Amazon and I bought um, some LED string lights. I'll get my phone. I'll tell you exactly which ones they are. Oh, my phone's right here. I can pull up my orders. We can look at this stuff together. I can have a seat right here. All right. Amazon.com. And uh, we're not doing this edited or anything like that. I 
I just wanted to do this like from start to finish so that you guys can really see how this thing works, how to get this thing done. And sort of what goes into this, all this stuff. All right. So they were, I don't know if we can see that or not. Can we focus? Can we focus? All right. Well, we can't. So anyway, I'll just tell you what they are. These are the U-Charge 600 count 29 $30 basically LED lights. So U-Charge warm white 600 LED curtain lights. And uh, when, I, when you look at the picture, you're gonna see that they all seem to come with a curtain, like an actual gauzy curtain. It doesn't, there's no sheer curtain in, involved. So, you know, I was kind of bummed out about that. For some reason, I thought there would be a curtain to help sort of diffuse and sort of make it a little more soft and magical. But after playing around with it, I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. You know, we'll see. Now that you know, there actually is down here, and you know how like they have the suggested extras? They do. They do say that you should buy these uh, these sheer panels, which are uh, one package of two panels is $10. So that's something to think about. That's something to think about. So that's the only thing that we've set up. Well, we've set up two things. We've set up these little curtains. And these are long. I mean, again, it's like my wingspan is probably like, I don't know, um, six feet. And if you were to stretch these out, this thing could be like 18 feet, maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's longer than what it looks like. My fly is down. Don't look. Okay, we fixed that. Um, and I've just kind of spaced them out so that way they're a little evenly spaced here. And then I've taken the bottoms because they were hitting the floor. And I took the twist ties and I just sort of clumped up the bottoms. And that just also helps them hang with weight so they stay straight if you had them on the floor they would be all jumbled up and you will notice that when you do undo these they can get jumbled up really easily i attached them with zip ties i just happen to have a wall here this is the wall that i use for like my seamless i put it up here but i've zip tied all these things to it zip ties are super nice they're very non-destructive you know it's it's a semi-permanent it ain't going to move until you cut them off so that's kind of cool and i made them really loose so that way i can sort of shuffle them back and forth if i wanted to uh, the other thing that we've got here is something for our animals to sit on. And that is just a big stool here. I have two dogs. That's also going to be kind of important. We actually have five dogs at the house, but we've got two now. And we'll introduce one of those really quick. These are sort of like a Christmassy portrait. That's the whole idea behind the lights is sort of be a little Christmassy. So we, uh, my dog Gwen, we got some sort of Christmas color things going on here. She's laying on the bed right now, but whatever. We'll, we'll get to that. So equipment, we're filming on an old 5D Mark II. We're gonna be shooting on a 5D Mark III and we're only gonna be using a 50 millimeter lens. And the reason why I chose a 50 millimeter lens is we'll get into some of the lighting aspects, but I just figured, hey, you know, that's kind of a really good lens to start with because you can get, you know, I think it's like 300 bucks or is it like 350, 399, somewhere between three and $400. You can get the nifty 50, 50 millimeter 1.4 it's an amazing lens for portraiture. Plus it also, I think, because it's cheap, it puts it in the range of pretty much everybody's budget. And let's say if you don't have it, but you do have like, you know, uh, 2470, you know, that's obviously fits in that range. It just, it just seemed like a really good choice for tonight. Um, we've got some lighting modifiers. I've got some big lights that we're gonna be using for manual exposures. We've got some smaller lights that we're gonna be using for TTL exposures. And uh, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else in the meantime I should be talking about. And I can't think of anything. Hmm. We'll make this little window a little bit bigger here and move it off over to the side. Let's do this. I think that's better, right? What do you think? Is that going to be okay with you guys if we do that? Ooh. It's not in focus. There we go. I'm trying to focus in on the um thing. So here's something that's really kind of interesting since we're looking at my studio right now. Plugs. There's a painting on the wall. There's an AC unit over here. Cords are hanging down. 
I got more stuff over here. Studios are fake, all right? Like, I, if you have a lot of money and you've got an amazing studio, good for you. You're awesome. You have won. You don't need to watch this. I'm just kidding. Actually, you should watch this anyway. Studios are a fake space, right? They're sort of whatever you make it in the moment. Um, whatever that's going to be is kind of up to whatever the shoot is going to be. We're only going to be focusing on an area about this big. Um, this wall is big enough for seamless. I can have somebody who's six foot, you know, and still be able to shoot them. I have to shoot down a little bit. I can sweep the floor. I can basically black this out and turn this into a gigantic, what looks to be a gigantic um, studio. And that's kind of the bonuses. The only problem that I don't like, which I would like to fix, I've got carpet. Carpet is not good for a studio. It just tisn't. It taint good, okay? So at some point, I'll take this carpet out and I'll replace it with something that is a little bit less carpet. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We'll talk about the gear as we get into it. I guess the only thing I'll talk about real quick are just some of the light stands since they're right here in front of us. I've got this. This is a C-stand. Um, i got another C-stand be, uh, behind. I've got a regular stand right here, which you can just see there. This is a very cheap stand, a very cheap thing with a not so cheap uh, flash in it. T that's going to be our TTL flash. So let's just go ahead and get into this. Let's just get into this. I want to start with, um, with TTL. I want to start with TTL because TTL is supposed to be the easy right out of the box solution. So let's start there. Let's just get that rolling. Um, I'm not going to use this stand. So let's take this off. Okay. And we will use, I've got two C stands here. We'll use this one here and the only reason why i'm choosing this one over the other one is that i have a nail pin which is a when you buy a c-stand they often do not come with the nail pins and the nail pin is a fairly important see if this won't be in focus but it's basically what your light holds on to and uh, that's kind of the most important aspect of a stand is the ability to hold your light so, here's what we're going to do. We're not going to explore lighting setups too much. I've already thought about this a little bit so i know what i'm looking for visually and it is basically just a standard sort of butterfly lighting type of setup all right we are we are on that thing is attached The one thing I am going to use our second stand here for. Oh, let's let's zoom out a little bit so you can see what's going on here. Fair enough, fair enough. There we go, a little bit wider. Oh no, I pressed the wrong thing. There we go. This perfect. This perfect. Okay. Let's take our second C-stand. Now this one does not have a nail pin. As I said, they normally don't come with nail pins. At least the kits I've ever bought have not come with nail pins. So what are we going to do with this? Well, I've got another use for it. 
I'm going to come way, well, for now we'll go like this. I'm not going to use two lights. We're just going to stick to a one light setup. But because I'm working alone, I'm going to use a stand to hold this. A nice diffuse reflector. What do they do? Check this out. Dark side of my face. Now it's the light side of my face. <laughs> In fact, you look at that. Makes a big difference, right? Like less than a stop of light difference total, which is pretty impressive. So this is, we're just going to unscrew this quite a bit. Here we go. This is so beautiful. Okay, so now I need to bring this over like this. To kind of wrangle this into a position that works for us here. Yeah. Well, that is not going to happen. I don't feel like. This thing is so tall. Which camera turn off? Oh, that one. That's fine. We can turn back on. Yes. Still connect. Very much so. Still connect. There, you can see how dirty my my desk is over yonder. What I would like is for this thing to kind of be, but that is not going to happen. Not going to happen, ladies and gents. So. Let's get crafty-ish. Crafty-ish. Take that off. Okay, so then what are what are our other options? Well, the cool thing about this guy is this bottom pulls out a little bit. So I got a lip. I got a lip. So let's use the lip. This was not planned. I'm not trying to prove how cool my stuff is. I'm, if anything, I'm just showing you kind of like how much of a problem solving endeavor photography can be all right here is a stool and there is our new setup if we need to kind of prop that up a little bit there are ways to do that in fact let's just go ahead and do that now i got an idea hopefully when i walk away it doesn't get all staticky and shit Okay. We got a small stand here. We got this like, I think this is called like a Bowens clamp. So I used to work with a lot of film crews back in Silicon Valley when you like do corporate shoots and stuff. And, um, you know, they got all these names for all their equipment. They're like, go get the Justin's clamp and the Bowens and the, get the Duvetine and the Hippadibadibatine, the Herpaderpatine and the Listerine. A 
Okay, so things that I already know I want to change. I'm not getting a whole lot of bokeh. I'm at 1.4 and I'm not getting a lot of pizzazz. How can I make those little points of light get bigger? Well, a couple things. One, let's find out kind of what our working space is now, okay? about that oh yeah that's way better I'm focusing on the front of the um, ottoman here which will be a dog so as I get closer to my subject at a wide open shutter or aperture the greater my background will be blown out and you can increase that by increasing the distance between your background and your subject. Okay. So now I'm adding on another piece of the puzzle. Okay. Are you ready? Here is the piece of the puzzle. We have a 600 RT EX or EXRT. And uh, this thing is just <laughs> I love this thing when I bought this they were brand new I think it was like five hundred dollars my alien bees uh, or my palsy buff Einstein is like 500 bucks for God's sakes so you know and this thing is like way bigger here comes one of our dogs now opinion you good boy you good boy come here you want to get up on the chair he's gonna be up on this chair Oh, and here he comes. Yes, you're a good boy. One of our subjects. So we're going to be using this, but we're not going to be using this as a flash that contributes light to the overall picture, right? There's no exposure changing light coming from this. This is only going to be used as a wireless, a wireless commander connecting to this guy, which is one of the new 430 RTs. So he's on now. I'm going to turn this on. When the little green light leak, uh, when the green light here, when the light turns green, actually, is when you know it's connected. So watch. Did you see that? There you go. Notice no flash came from here when I triggered that. That's all because. Um, there is no radio transmission coming from that. All right, let's see what we can do here. Pinion, why don't you come over here, buddy? Come here, bud. Up, up. Look at that. What a good boy. You want to sit? You want to sit? Sit. You're a good boy. I know. Stay. Oh, my goodness. I know. You're such a good boy. Sit. Sit. You can, you can go down. Good boy. You, you can just chill there for a second. Let's go ahead since he's sitting there and relaxing. If I sit down, he's going to come to me. Stay. Stay, Mr. P. Not super concerned about composition yet. Okay. Well. It's plain. It's kind of plainish. Stay pin. You're a good boy. Of course, here comes my other dog because she's jealous. He didn't stay. Oh, you're a good boy. You like cheese? Just ask me if you like cheese. 
He says, yes, he loves cheese. <laughs> okay, so this is better. This is better. So what are we doing here? Not a whole lot. The one thing I'm going to try doing here. So let me talk about the problem that we're dealing with. The problem that we're dealing with is ambient versus flash. We're in a dark environment, which is good, but part of the problem is that we're getting a lot of ambient spill all over the scene. And that is kind of washing him out. So I've turned off the lights, which you can see in the viewfinder. Just find Gwen stay. Gwen stay, pinion stay, stay. You good boy. All right, let's see what this, what we come up with here. Okay. This is starting to feel a whole lot more awesome. This is starting to feel a whole lot more awesome. So let's talk about what's happening all over this picture real quick. I have red lights. You can see them. Turn this on for a second. Maybe. There we go. Oh, we're going to turn on the other one. Okay. So I have a red strip LED just for effects here in the studio that run all over these windows. So back here, Gwen. Up, up, up. Come on. Up, up. Good girl. You're a good girl. Sit, 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 sit. You're a good girl. Oh, yes. Okay, stay there. Stay. Just sit. Sit. She does. No, no, don't touch. That's you'll fall right through. Good girl. Good girl. Look at her ears. Stay. <laughs> she thinks she's in trouble. We'll get Pinion back up there. He's a little more calm. Um. But over here, see if we can get our cursor. You see, like, kind of this blue is from behind us, which I like. And then that's Gwen's tail. And this red. This whole red highlight thing, that's all from. That's just all from uh, from those lights in the background. Come here, Pin. Back up. Oh, you okay, buddy? Come on. You're such a good boy. Here, you had eye boogers. See, now Gwen's all jealous. It's okay, guys. All right. Sit. Gwen, come here. Come here. Off. Off. Pin. Sit. Sit. You're a good boy. Oh, my gosh. Stay. Stay there. All right. So I've moved the lights a little bit. My dogs are, like, mid-range easy to work with. Like, not every dog is easy to work with. My dogs are, like, mid-range. Stay, Pin. Stay there, buddy. I'm using my flash. You good boy? You like cheese? Oh, that's going to be a good one right there. And look at that. He gets right off. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that easy. It's literally that freaking easy. Look at this. Look how crazy this looks. All we've done is use mixed ambient and flashlight. Huh. I, so here's another thing that that's an option. I don't know. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. We can change this to green. Right? As we all know, green and red, that's Christmas as hell. Come here, Christmas as heck. Come here, Gwen. Up, up. Sit. 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 Good girl. Stay. 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 Gwen, stay. Stay. You good girl? You like cheese? Gwen, stay. Stay. Stay, Gwen. 
Don't move, Gwen. You're doing a good job. Hey, Gwen, 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 sit, 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 sit. Oh, that's so cute. You're such a good girl. Such a good girl. Let's see what we get here. That one's a little blurry. That one's better. Look at that. I mean, personally, I think the green. You like chicken? You want cheese? You want treats? Gwen, you want treats? No, no, sit, 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 sit. Oh, pin, get up there. Up, 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 pin, up, go, pin. <whistles> up here, bud, come on. Wrong up, he just got on the chair behind me. Turkey, pin, come here. Good jump, buddy. Up, up, pin. Sit. Sit. Gwen, off. Gwen, off. Good girl, Gwen. Stay there, pin. Stay there. All right, pinion. Who's best doggy? Who's best doggy? You good boy? Let's see what this looks like with you. Stay there, bud. Stay there. Oh my God. Look at that face. So here's my problem with um, TTL. I feel like it is underexposing. I feel like it's underexposing. Stay there, Pin. You're doing so good. All right, do whatever. I also don't like the green. The green is a little sickly. So maybe, maybe. Don't want that. Don't want that. No, 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 no. These are all wrong. I've I've just hit the the strobe feature. It's bad. So bad. I think I walked the remote somewhere. This is a habit of mine. I did. I walked. Ooh. So wait, that's white. That's the color we want. Okay, Pen. Actually, Gwen. Let's do this. Let's dial up the flash. Okay. I've changed the exposure composition of the flash by one. Who wants to come up? Up, up. Stay. Gwen. Come here, Gwen. All right. All right, Mr. Pinion. You're being such a champ today. We're such a champ. Pinion. You like cheese? Oh, you want cheese? He's like, I want cheese so bad, Dad. Oh, Daddy, I want cheese so bad. Oh, that color is so much better. But. But where's it, where is it saving these? That was our last one. And that's our new one. Now, aside from the green color, us removing that, making a nice change. Doesn't appear to have made any difference whatsoever.
Oh, Windows. Oh, Windows. You phenomenal. You phenomenal piece of... Oh, my God. I swear, I swear to God. I swear to God. Windows? I, why would you even do this to me? Alright, well, let's just do this again. All right, well, thank you, Windows. You were amazing. You were just astounding. Thank you for being so helpful. Oh, then it works. Okay. Let's do this. We'll just change this to... Uh, We'll just do that. There we go. So anyway, my point was, before the computer decided to hate on us, is that we just dialed in a full stop of lighting compensation, and we got nothing out of it. Why? You know, TTL looks at everything in a scene, and it tries to meter stuff correctly. And then depending on what your camera settings are and what your background and your foreground and your subject, it's going to be different. It could be different from picture to picture. Come here, Pin. Or Gwen, here. Up, 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 Gwen. Good girl. You're such a good girl. Sit. Sit. Gwen, sit. I'm going to back you up. There you go. Stay there. Stay. Gwen, stay. 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 Gwen. Stay. That's a good girl right there. Oh, oh, you're so pretty. Good girl. You like cheese? You big fan of cheese? All right. So this is Gwen. Thank God we've got the bigger pictures because some of these just do not look like All right, let's see if that one. Now I've dialed in a whole nother stop. Okay, so now, now we're beginning to see the problem. Part of the problem is, stay go pin, is lighting position. So I have tilted that down a bit. So it is pointing much more at Gwen here. You good girl? You like cheese? You hungry? Oh boy. I'm gonna have to feed these dogs so many treats later. Look at that. Look at that. That looks too bright though, doesn't it? Now we're like way too bright territory. Again, TTL. We didn't change the settings of the light. We just moved the light. TTL did not necessarily fix the problem. One more time, Gwen. You're such a good girl. Oh, Gwen. You want cookies? Gwen's like, yes, I definitely want cookies. So there we go. So we're getting like a fairly good exposure now. That's a cute picture. She just looks so cute. The background looks nice. I think I would like to...
to oh man look how creamy that looks her eyes are super sharp she's very expressive Gwen you're doing a great job you're doing such a good job she's come over to say hi lens flare so the way that I'm getting um, the way that, I'll use this for now it's like a scary movie <laughs> The way that I'm pulling focus is that I'm using this flashlight on their eyes so I can see what's going on there. Okay. So we actually got a good exposure. Now let's just talk about this real quick. What did I have to do to get that good exposure? Well, we – oh, man, I'm just looking at this picture. She is so adorable. It's pathetic. Well, we had to – Expose for the ambient light, which I had pretty much already did that before we got started. I haven't really messed with that setting on the camera at all. In fact, up here in the top right of the of the screen, right here, right above me, you can see all the information for the camera. And I think you can tell that it hasn't changed at all. We're at negative one EV on aperture priority. So, so now you know. So now you know. Okay. Now we want to change things up. Um, but before we change things up, I just want to talk about TTL. TTL did a really, really good job there. It figured stuff out. Actually, it did do a good job, but we kind of figured it out, right? I mean, we dialed in plus, we dialed in negative, then we went up again twice and then down and moved the light. And we found that, you know, oh, the camera, there we go. We found that the camera sort of like... Not this camera. That camera over there, you know, it, it would take a different picture. Even when we moved the, the light, the, the exposure would be way, way different. So that's something to think about. And that is, you know, we had to futz with the light a little bit in a fairly contained and easy to manage studio. But we had to futz with it to get it to look the way that we wanted it to look. Well, you know, one of the things that's supposed to be the big selling point about TTL is that you don't have to do that stuff or you have to do it less. But when you start talking about like, oh, I had to turn it up and turn it down and find the sweet spot before I got the right picture, what does that sound like? It sounds like manual, right? It sounds like we're shooting in manual. That's what that sounds like. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot in manual. I like to talk about my cheap equipment. You can't even buy this thing on Amazon anymore. But this was, you can buy different versions of this. But when I first bought this, I don't know if I have the piece. Let's see if I've got the piece around here. Nah, I don't see it. But when I first bought this, it had this little ring, this metal ring, which it just did not fit this. This is a knockoff on the Last Light Easy Box. And it would do that. Like you would put the ring. Let's change this music, man. Let's do. Um, I totally do, dude. I totally do. Oh my God, my computer is lagging so, you, oh. If you guys could just see how, my, is, is it even running over there? I mean, it's like, is this even slightly smooth? I bet it's not. There's no way that this can be like running smooth at all. Now we're only at 20 something percent CPU. That's not very smooth, but whatever. Anyway, when I bought the softbox, I think it was like 35 bucks. And then I ended up buying this mount separately at some point. Now these two things just come together for the same price. It's actually a really good softbox. I mean, this is a really good softbox. Every picture that we just took, you know, kind of shows it. It knows 
it knows how to do what it do. So I'm gonna put this stuff over Chaw. And now we're gonna use something different. Now we are going to use my Einstein from Paul C. Buff. And obviously, if the uh, speed lights can handle this photo, this thing should be just about fine. Now, I was thinking about what modifier I wanted to use with this thing. And uh, my go-to these days is pretty much the beauty dish. One thing I've learned is that the beauty dish just rocks. Uh, a long time ago, people were like, stay away from beauty dishes if you've got somebody with a big nose or bad complexion or whatever. And, uh, you know, I have a very specific way that I always like... edit my photos and I have never noticed while editing my photos that the soft box versus the um, beauty dish made or broke the photo the beauty dish is an amazing tool and if somebody was like well I've only got like you know, I got like a budget of $150 and I can either get like a really amazing softbox or a beauty dish. You know, I would almost be tempted to say, you know, get the beauty dish if you love sculpting and crafting with light. Softboxes are safe, right? Like you can take softboxes anywhere and you know what kind of results you're going to get and it's going to be a good result. So for that reason, you won't ever go wrong with a softbox. In fact, what we're going to do now is one of my favorite lights. This is a, I think it's like a 33 inch shallow Octa by Paul C. Buff. Does it have the, uh, it's by Paul C. Buff. I just don't know. But this thing does not get nearly enough use out of me and so that's part of the reason why I've got it here I mean I have a soft box that's basically a six foot it's a it's a it's either a six foot by three foot soft box or it's it's actually might be like four five foot by two foot it's massive whatever it is this absolutely massive soft box which um let me put it this way if you ever like have got to get a shot and you've got the time and effort to sort of set something like that up. You will never not get the photo if you're using a six or five foot softbox. It's it's cheating, honestly. You know the whole pay to play thing? Well, that is definitely, or pay to win. That is definitely pay to win. If you buy that, you you are succeeding. And it's just the way that light works. Um, you know, people can do some creative use with hard light and shape it and make it wonderful. And that's not my argument. Um, those are usually my favorite photos, the ones where people do amazing things with light. But, you know, as we all know, in this industry, you can also get away with, you know, really soft sort of utilized correctly but not necessarily like over sculpted light and um you can do some really 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 amazing things with that stuff any Leibowitz is a great example of somebody who knows how to use a large umbrella a large light source i have a seven foot umbrella and that seven foot umbrella like if i have a job that's paying me any sort of good money that thing just goes uh, because I know at the end of the day, when 
when or if any feces runs into a rotary wind making device that that massive umbrella will bail me out of whatever problems I'm dealing with and that is not that is not hyperbole at all that is pure fact I mean that is just pure fact um, a giant seven foot umbrella is going to give you a quality of light that is par none. Let's talk about crafting light, right? Sharp light, hard light, small source, really specular, sharp shadows. You can do some amazing things like that. And, and, and like I said, there's a lot of people who do that and it's just like, whoa, that is beyond amazing. The photo you have crafted is just insane but a seven foot umbrella will do you know will quite often yield results just as pleasing to your client if not more to be honest with you with almost none of the guesswork i mean you just have to know not to put it up in high winds you take a seven foot umbrella in a one mile an hour wind and it is gone I have broken three umbrellas, just like little breezes. I've uh, luckily have not damaged any of my um, lights, but that is that's not a trend that's going to last forever. Sooner or later, you know, if you're not careful, an umbrella is going to fall, take your light with you, and you're going to be in for more than just the expense of the um, of the light. Okay, so. Now we're in manual mode. There is there is no TTL here at all. None at all. So we can do one of two things. We can either dial in the camera. We can, you know, do some meter reading here. And it'll tell me well, this is 8.4 um, at ISO 100. 125th and that will give me a properly exposed picture but i also know that at those speeds i'm not going to get those lights in the background so we can't do that right i don't want to change the camera i want all the settings that you've been looking at to stay the same so let's go ahead and get this on the camera this is a wireless cyber sync that allows me to control you can't see it because it's out of focus allows me to control that light remotely all the levels and all that good stuff go we're all set all right and there's some pictures of the floor and the desk and there's you looking at me that's the surface i was telling you about mr uh gwen mrs gwen gwen come you want to put on your new sweater real quick would you like to be a little more festive We wanted to like you know make this even more um christmasy oh gwen <laughs> she loves sweaters when she was rescued she was wearing sweaters and it was like from that day on you could just knew that was kind of her thing like you know when it's time to take a sweater off she'll lift her paw up there you go gwen in your head other paw good girl now she feels naked and she's all nervous and Gwen are you ready all right, let me let me just show you Gwen come here Gwen you want this are you ready are you ready you want this okay you ready come here yes I know I know hold on hold on hold on you have to let me put it around your head first there we go oh wow already just looking 100% prettier I know. Give me your paw. There we go. And through. And there we go. This one's a little tighter. Oh my goodness. Look at you. Oh, Gwen. You look a little bit like a sausage casing, but that's okay. It's in nowadays. Yes, you look so pretty. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, up, up, up. Come here, Gwen. Up, up. And sit. 
and sit. Let's have you sit. Sit. Stay. 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 She's probably not going to stay. She didn't stay. She's a little less interested in listening than Pinion. Come here, Gwen. There you go. I'm going to just move you back a little bit, okay? Right there. Oh, such a good girl. Stay. Stay. I mean it this time, Gwen. Stay. Okay. One of the things we could do here. Stay. We have the ability to turn on a modeling light, so let's do that. Menu. All right. Oh, Gwen. Let's see where we're at here. Oh, my God. Stay, Gwen. We've nuclear blasted her. Let's turn that down a lot. So we're now at the very bottom of this. Oh no, look at that. We are at the very bottom of this light's output. It does not get any lower than that. So, you know, the control that you would normally use to fix that would be. Some combination of your ISO, which is already at 100. Or ours is at 1600 for ambient light. Our shutter speed is sort of roaming around here. I'm going to turn that to manual. I'm going to set that to like 50. Try it again. There we go. Well, there's a couple problems. All of which are the power. The power of the light. Opinion, you have to just stay there for a second, buddy. All right, well, we only really have one option. We're not going to, I don't want to mess with, uh, oh, we've already changed, you know, the, the F-stop. And that's a no-no. So here's what we're going to do, folks. I haven't done this for a while. We are going to undo... Our Einstein. And we are going to use another light. Now, here's something that is actually important. And I haven't run into this problem in a while. But let me tell you about something really cool. And that is... You don't have to spend $500 on an Einstein light. If you're going to be in the studio. You can also buy one of these. This is an Alien B. So the the um this is an Alien B's 400. I've got an Einstein. 
an Alien Bees 400 and an Alien Bees uh, 600, I think, or 800, whatever. Like, this is like 160 watt seconds. The Einstein is 640. This is not going to put out anywhere near as much light as that. In fact, it should put out roughly a quarter. I think it's kind of what my rough um, experiments in the past have yielded. But that does mean something else. It means we are going to need All right, getting my other radio transmitters over here. Here we are. All right, so when the super expensive solution doesn't work, I use the much less expensive solution, which is the Aputure, actually the name, not even joking, Aputure. Stay there, Gwen, stay or don't. You know what, Gwen, take five. You've earned it. Okay. All right. Well, that's on. Same type of camera, power cable, so that doesn't change anything. We are plugged in. Much less power now. Much less power. Let's plug in our sync cable here. Gwen, come here, baby. You're not getting away that easily. All right, we will get rid of our cyber commander. And man, if we weren't in manual now, we are like deep manual. And I'm talking like literally manual. Every setting that we want to change on that light, we got to get up and walk over there to do. I'm putting an aperture onto my camera. Okay, I want this one set to transceive. This one should be just set to receive. And there we are. Awesome. Okay. That is that I'm a little nervous about how bright the floor looks. Come here, Gwen. Come here. Up up. Good girl. Oh. You are being such a good girl tonight. Turn you around carefully. There you go. You can lay down. That's good. Stay there. She's like, you want to rub my belly? Stay. You are such a good doggy. Just chill out for a second, Mrs. Gwendolyn. Okay. Well, let's find out. We are at the lowest power setting. Stay there, Gwen. We're at the lowest power setting available to us here. Is it too much still? Is it too much to ask? That is uh, a lot of light. That is just an absolutely insane amount of light. I'm just going to go ahead and stop this down to 125th and just see what happens here. All right, this is sort of our last. Yeah, one, it's shutter speed is not going to affect the amount of light at all. I mean, I know that. So.
So how many stops over do we think we are right now? Because normally what you would do is you would start slamming neutral density filters. But what we'll do instead is diffusion material. Oh my God. Did you guys know it was going to take this much effort? Because I'll be honest with you, I kind of didn't. I kind of did not. Okay. So what I have here, oh man, I was just thinking about this yesterday and how important it is to make this point to everybody. When you get an old, remember how I told you that I've had like three umbrellas? I still have the overlay diffusion material for two of them um, because it's like, it is so useful. I mean, if you break a light, don't throw away the material that comes with the light. Keep it keep it like you never know when you're going to need to use it i mean i think now is a really good example of that so what i've done is i've doubled up this old umbrella diffusion material just to basically make a really really thick uh ply of white and i'm using Little clamps. I'll turn on the light so you can see what's going on here. Not fair to be blinded. Stay, Gwen. You're good. So here's my old diffusion material. It looks kind of like a big old diaper. It's a really sexy analogy. We'll get one more. We'll see if this does it. I mean, we are literally running at a power level on a camera. You know, it doesn't get any lower than this. We have the weakest flash bulb. Shutter speed has no bearing on this shot at all because we're dialing in so much ambient. The shutter speed would only be used to stop the action. There's no action, right? So it doesn't change the exposure um, at all. It will never affect the amount of strobe light that comes in, other than, you know, like high speed sync and stuff like that, where it's more of a light's being blocked versus coming, coming through, right? Because light moves at the speed of light. The end the end all right let's give this a shot Gwen looks comfortable sure sure she's excited about taking another picture here lights are off and the lights are off again because it will contribute too much ambient to the scene. Gwen, you look so pretty. Number one pretty dog in America, yes? Absolutely. All right. Does make any difference at all? Yeah, not really. Not really. I mean, the only way I'm going to be able to control this light is the following. I know that we're basically like almost three stops of light overblown here. And you can see what happens. As soon as I start dialing that down into the appropriate areas, I lose my ambient. I lose everything. I lose everything. All the magic is gone. Okay, one last thing we could do. So we could use the inverse square law. And that is as you double the distance of light, 
to your subject, it then gets half as much weaker. So if we take this and we take this all the way up to the ceiling, turn that down like I'm gonna feather this a lot now the light literally is not aimed at Gwen our canine subject at all it's not in any way aimed at her and let's go like this I really want to get this up as much as possible Fighting with the ceiling. Stay there, Gwen. You're fine. Gwen looks a little nervous. This mass of light is like looming over her. I do not uh, blame her. If I knew I was the one in charge of the light hanging over me, I would be nervous as well. So we're just carefully sort of maneuvering this. We have some. ceiling obstacles namely a ceiling fan which is very helpful when it's warm or cold and you need to circulate completely unhelpful any other time okay well we're getting there a little bit more up and then pray to god this doesn't fall and i get a call from Peter. I'm just not in the mood for it. Not in the mood for another call from PETA. Oh, this light, or this fan, I should say, is really just being a turd. There we go. There we go. All right. We in control now. Oh, we in control now. Okay. All right. Gwen, oh Gwendolyn, come here, baby girl. Come on, back up, 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 up. I'll turn on the light here in a second so you can see kind of what I did here. Okay, stay, 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 sit, 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 Gwen. You good girl, sit, stay, <laughs> stay. Gwen, 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 no, no. No, you're so cute up there. Come on. Come here. Come here, Gwen. Up, up, up. Up, up, up. You're such a shy dog. You just like, you don't know that you're pretty. You have no self-esteem. Stay. There you go, girl. Oh my gosh. Gwen, if this works, it's the picture of the night. Gwen, you like cheese? You hungry? You hungry? You want treats? You good girl. Gwen, Gwen, come here. <laughs> no, sit, 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 sit. Sit, sit, oh my God, Gwen. <gasps> okay, hold on, Gwen, don't move. Gwen, you like cheese? Oh, ladies and gent, ladies and gentlemen. So here's what we've done. Here's what we've done. We've raised our light up to a point. Stay there, Gwen. Where now it has much less impact on our scene. Oh, Gwendolyn, Gwen. Hey, baby, you good girl. Oh, Gwen, sit, 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 sit. Oh, good girl. What a good girl. Stay there. Stay there, Gwen. Gwen. You hungry? You hungry? Gwen, you hungry? Ladies and gentlemen, we are back in action. 
Gwen. Gwen, you hungry? You hungry? What you want? Hey, no, no, sit, 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 sit. Good girl. You hungry, huh? Gwen, you hungry? You hungry? Oh, you want treats? You good girl? <laughs> Oh, Gwen, you moved. You moved. So I think, honestly, like when we look back at this, the photos we're going to like the most are the ones that came from the strobe. Right, Gwen? You hungry? The ones that... Oh, shoot. So I'm using this. But... Flashlight actually contributes a lot of light to the scene. <gasps> Go in. Give me a kiss. Hi. Sit. 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 Go ahead and sit. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. You hungry? You hungry? I think I got it. I think I got a good one there, Gwen. Take a look at this. The eyes are pretty sharp. It's a little bit overexposed, though, but I don't know how else we can get this down. I mean, with a little more diffusion and all those kinds of things, we could we could easily Gwen, you hungry? You hungry? You hungry? How about that? How about that? I mean, my feeling is is that using did not mean to open that. Here's a picture with TTL. That is not focus. That is the, uh, there we go. I mean, that's actually super sharp. I mean, I think our photos actually live with the, um, with the speed lights. And I don't think, oh, actually though, load in, give me, give me full res here. It's thinking. It's trying. There they are. All right, so here's my point. My point is that actually looks pretty good. <laughs> that looks pretty good. I think it looks better when you're up close and you got all of the shiny dots. There are some problems. Like we have the specular highlight from the lamp up above. Um, You really see it. In some of these shots, I thought. Did any of these come out like in focus at all? Is this picture like only one megabyte? 
Is it a GIF? It's an animated GIF? What are we looking at here? I feel like she's not going to be in focus at all. And she's not. Her shirt is, though. I mean, I think one of the things... Actually, I don't think. I know. One of the reasons why I like these pictures more is that because I'm able to get the light closer, it's affecting the background a whole lot less. So the background just kind of becomes an object, right? So if anything, you know what we could call this? We could call this an, an, an exercise in big versus small flash. I mean, you just saw here in the studio something very specific. Now, if you're working in a bright light condition, which I've done before, you need a lot of small speed lights to overpower whatever those bright conditions are being caused by, usually the sun, right? Navigate that right there. Here we go. Here we go. So there we go. Go ahead and clamp this off. Turn that off and unplug it. And just show how absurd this was. And I did not set off trying to find this. This is... This is a completely independent result from what I was kind of thinking would happen, to be honest with you. But let me just show you how absurd this is. Look at how many layers of diffusion. I mean, that is... There are four ply. Plies of white on top of that light, just trying to keep it under control. And this is... An Alien B400, which is an astounding light, packs a wallop. I mean, this is this is the junior light, you know what I mean? And it still really got out in front of in front of the subject and really kind of took over the whole area. This probably goes without saying, but the reason why we weren't using um, changing the aperture to choke the light was because we want the aperture as wide open as possible so that way the lights in the background kind of have that really nice bokeh-ish feeling one thing that we could do real quick Well, we're, I'm just, I'm not going to right now because I feel like I don't want to overcomplicate the evening any more than I could. And trust me, I can really overcomplicate a lot of stuff here. But there was like another option that we could have tried. I mean, like if you're, if all you're endeavoring to do is choke the light off. We could have changed the light, the, the modifier, the lighting modifier to any number of different types of lighting modifiers. Um, putting an egg crate on the front will stop the spill all around. But then it just seems like a completely different exercise at that point to me. You know, we were already using a fairly straightforward softbox here. I wasn't really all that interested in reinventing the formula completely from one softbox to the next. And I think that gives you just like a really good idea of like what the difference is power wise. 
But also, have you ever watched those videos like where you see Joe McNally or somebody who shoots a lot of flash photography and they're out there like in the fields and stuff, you know, like they're out in the field and they're trying to, you know, get get whatever picture it is they're trying to get and they have to use like four speed lights to battle the sun. And you're like, dude, for the same cost, you could just get like a pro photo or an alien beast, you know, and just be like all set. Don't have to worry about anything. All right, guess what? We're back to. We're back to small flash. Again, this doesn't contribute to the scene at all. There's a little indicator here that lets you know if it's contributing light to the scene or if it's not. That indicator is off, letting me know that it is not contributing Jack Frost. And uh, we just have our beautiful subject here, the adorable Gwendolyn. Oh, Gwen. How is my crappy computer holding up? Your guess is as good as mine. All right. She looks so cute. You want a treat? You want a treat? Gwen, you want a treat? That should be a good one. This is a little bit dark. She's a little suspicious. She thinks I'm gonna, uh, who knows what she thinks. You just never know what's going on in the mind of a dog. They are how, you know, stay there Gwen, you're fine. She's like, what is happening dad? If I can put that like this. Stay, Gwen, stay, stay. You good girl? I love you. Oh, Gwen. I love you. You want treats? There you go, a little fillboard. Oh, shoot. That's beyond adorable. That's just beyond adorable. Gwen. Gwen. Let's switch this microphone to the other side, shall we? It's going to click. This is thing just no, just tucked in there. I'm gonna move this. So cute, Mrs. Gwen. Yes, you're so happy. You a good girl? Are you a good girl, huh? You can come on. Yes, yes, yes. I know. You need kisses. I know. You're a good girl. Pinion! Oh, Mr. Pin! How about you want to do another set of close-ups? 
up, 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 pin. Pin. Up, up. Not, not there, though. Not there. Don't jump that way. There you go. Up, up. No, 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 no. Right here. Right there, bud. There you go. And sit. Sit. And stay. Don't move, pinion. Doing treats? Doing treats? Holy shit. Is that photo of the night right there, ladies and gentlemen? Is that photo of the night? Oh my god. Holy snap. All right, let's talk about what we just did there real quick. Let's talk about what we did there real quick. Okay, here's where we are right now. Turn off my phone flashlight. So we are taking this picture, F4, 1 25th of a second. The uh, shutter speed does not matter. It does matter a little bit for the ambient light. But, um, you know, it's not really, if anything, it's just making it more rich. We started off a little bit higher ambient. I like this better. Look how beautiful that looks. Look at that. Guys. Guys. Okay. So, um, I don't know if, can we see? Yes. We have here, this is our light. TTL still. I'm dialing in, I think at this point, I was dialing in 0% um, compensation, but we were basically running the camera. It's kind of hard to tell with the lights on, but it was, it was less than that. Let's turn this off real quick. Let me turn these off and just kind of see where we were ambient light wise. So when we're shooting like this, So we were basically at minus one overall exposure compensation. So if you just want to kind of do some janky math, which is okay. If you're running at minus one overall, you can just, you know, let's pretend that's zero for our calculations. That means that at 0% EV exposure compensation for uh, the flash, it's basically plus one, right? So it's plus one over the scene, which just happens to be scene negative one, exposure to flash zero. So it's one over the overall exposure. Um, we did that all with this awesome, amazing, cannot, cannot tell you how much of a pleasure it's been having the 430 ex3 i've got two 430 ex's ex2's which are not radio transmission they are only line of sight only and uh holy crap the radio function is worth the price of admission alone worth the price of admission all by itself so freaking handy uh we were using a 50 millimeter 1.4 we were all the way open right so we were at 1.4 that's what gave us all the beautiful bokity light bits in the background and um yeah guys i mean look at that one light it was bouncing down into our reflector and oh i should also tell you can't tell now I could probably pick up the camera. Eh, well, I'm not going to. Before we had this sort of tilted towards the subject a little bit like this, right? So this pole here was Pinion, the dog. We kind of had it pointed at him. As it, is, as it stands now, I actually have it pointed straight down. And not only am I pointed straight down, but I am about... Pinion was here, so we're about six inches in front of him. So pointed straight down and in front of him. So this is not direct light. This is feathered light, right? So 
just to visualize this. Here's our light head. Here's pinion. We were kind of more like this. We were actually like this. You know, so like the, the light is totally in front of them. And the way that light works, let's just talk about physics real quick. <clears throat> Is that it's not like it's got these little black baffles in here that help columnate the light a little bit. But light is a very special thing. Particles that emit from right here, they can fly in that direction. Not everything just goes straight. It goes in every direction, right? So some of them will literally shear off and head off in this direction. So when you feather a light, so when your subject is like, you know, here and you're lighting him straight on, when you feather it so it's really not even pointed towards him, that light is still making the angles to touch him. Much less light, though. In fact, we could have done that with our other light. We could have dramatically feathered the light back towards me. The problem is, it's like, that would have taken a lot of light off of our subject. But again, we're still just kind of spilling so much over into the, uh, into the environment. The solution there would have been to change to a completely different modifying system. And, you know, I think what we did instead was just kind of prove how how much trouble sometimes a big studio flash can be versus a small studio flash. Now, my point was going to be the following, which I wasn't able to make, which is great. I like being surprised when these things happen. But my big point was going to be, what's better, TTL or manual? This was a really bad demonstration to make any good points about that, because I think walking away from this, you would have to agree that TTL sort of won the day. But TTL didn't really win the day. The system, the Canon Speedlight system won the day. That is 100% not in dispute. That's big props. That's why I bought them, because they are that good. TTL, however, for the most part, I usually shoot manual instead of TTL. And my point being was going to be the following. Um, it didn't work out this way, but my point was going to be, and we'll, maybe we'll just do another, another shoot and explain that uh, later. But the point is the following. With TTL, and you saw us doing it, it was very like you had to dial it up, you had to dial it back down, and then we went up two, and then we went down again. I mean, when you work with TTL, you still have to dial up and down. It's the exact same thing as manual. They're 100% the same. Well, we, if anything, we've proven that um, just choose the system that works the best for you, right? To be completely honest with you, when I'm using the small strobes, I'm almost always in TTL because that's kind of what they were made for. And I dial it up and down. It's basically manual. When I'm using the big strobes, they only have one option. They're only manual. They don't have a TTL option, and that's fine. That doesn't bug me. It's all good. It's all good. So, you know, don't get caught up in the whole TTL versus manual argument. Um, there's a lot of people, including a lot of people who I just I adore them. I love these people, but they are ambassadors for their companies. They are Nikon, and they are Canon ambassadors, and they say things like, TTL is going to save your life. And I couldn't have done this without the ease and use of TTL. And it's like, dude, honestly, kind of, it's kind of BS. It's kind of BS. You're going to have to do the same work on both of those things. I've been on shoots where it's like, oh, and speaking of, by the way, I would just like to say to even the playing field, a couple weeks ago, about a month ago, actually, October, um, we were out shooting and it was like the last bright, sunny, 60 degree day of the year, I'm pretty sure. And that's not how we schedule it. It just happened to be. So we go out, it's bright sun and it is just blasting. It is eating us alive. And we were in the middle of a field. And the whole point was is that I needed to do like face in a place, right? An environmental portraiture. So we're in this football field for a reason. So I don't necessarily mind the bad light as long as I can control it, right? Hmm? So I bring in the alien bees. I have the sunlight just barely behind our subject, just kind of rim lighting them a little bit. Using the alien bees, the, the Einstein is the only light I have powerful enough. So that way I can then expose for the background, drop it down a little bit so it's got some saturation. And now I can overpower the sun with the alien bees and light my subject up, right? 
It's an amazing way to work. And only the alien bees could do that because later on, after a couple hours, the sun went down. I took the cannon system out with the 34 EX3, go up to another bleacher because it's smaller. I'm like, ah, I just want to ride light. You know, I don't have to carry a battery pack, all that bullshit. We go up, we take a couple pictures and like you can instantly tell, oh my God. It's like that thing is not putting out anywhere near. It, it's it, I had it maxed out, right? Absolute maxed out. And we just had to get closer and closer and closer with the light. And, um, you know, by the time we were done, I just kind of had to Photoshop the light out of some pictures because it was it was so close in order to get enough light in there. So you can see, like, in that case, it was the exact opposite problem. Here in the studio, big lights, too much light, right, without having to wrangle them down or do some trickery. Out there in the bright sunlight, the little lights, they had too little light. And there is no trickery that you can do to make a little light have more light other than just either bring in the big light or just get more little lights. So there we go, guys. I think that's going to be it for our little demonstration show. If you like this stuff, awesome. You know, let me know. Uh, Twitter.com backslash abject. So at abject on Twitter. Uh, Facebook at abject. On the web, www benjaminlehmanphotography.com please follow the twitter i am a subpar gamer if you want to watch me play games sometimes and i am a slightly arguably arguably above par photographer but just ever so slightly actually maybe i'm subpar there too for all i know But regardless, if you want to see a guy fail, that's good too. I don't mind showing myself fail. This is also the other important part that I think needs to be shown. The breakdown. The teardown. Like I've been on shoots that have lasted for five, six hours. And it finally wraps. And then you're just looking at all the stuff you have to pack up. And you're like, oh god. You know, it's just like, oh lord, please. Why? Why? Why does it do this to me? But this is also the part of the day where if you are going to forget something behind, it's going to happen in this phase. So, if you have an assistant, which I don't normally do, to be honest with you. I do a lot of awkwardly big jobs kind of by myself, which is a bad idea. But if you have an assistant, have them put away things as you're done using them if possible or set them aside. Staging area, actually. Very much preferred. And if you don't, and you're sort of, you know, got to work fast and loose, and all that jazz and you're on your own you're rolling solo just keep a mental inventory during the day of what you've used which if you're me you will totally forget and then at the end of the day try to you know go through that mental inventory and if possible Do the, the, the inventory you need to know is what's in your bags, right? That's the important inventory. Because then when you're in the field and you're packing things up, like I always put things in the exact same place. I know how many wireless triggers I have. I know how many cords I have. The thing that always gets me are the really weird random things. I mean, the things that you would think would be either too ubiquitous to lose or it's like, you know, like right now, this is a really good example. Where did I put my lens cap? Like, it's the most silly thing to lose. And yet, I don't think I've ever done a shoot where I haven't managed to lose a lens cap. It's like my superpower. 
I now, I literally now buy lens caps in bulk because I know that I am going to misplace it and be like all, all frustrated with myself. So I've bought myself a little bit of leeway by just buying extra ones. So when I lose it, I don't, I'm not like cursing myself too much, just slightly mostly. In case you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm putting things away. Going through my light bag, making sure my lights have their caps on, making sure that the right cord is with, with each light. And I can close that light bag and know that everything that's supposed to be in there is in there. All right, guys. That's where we're going to call it. We made this beautiful picture. We got a couple good ones of Gwen, too. She's not left out of the equation. I appreciate you guys kind of putting up with this, with the strobe cam here. Hopefully, I'll get that fixed here. We just need to invest in a better, better laptop, which I'm not. Have not. Got an amazing computer back there. This is crap. Uh, thank you guys so much. Like I said, follow me, all that BS, and uh, I will check you all later. Have a great evening. Peace out, you cute bastards. <laughs>